Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, he mahi nui ten, tenei ki a koutou. Um, ko waio, ko putu aki te maunga, ko whakatāne te awa, ko mātātua te waka, ko ngāti ao te iwi, ko ngāti puke ko me te pati wai ngā hapu, ko Megalana Pe tōku ingoa. Uh, tēnā koutou. Greetings, uh, my name is Megan Lanapia and I'm also a PhD student at the University of Waikato uh, and I'm here to present uh, my research which is looking at management strategies for a starfish outbreak also in Ohiwa Harbour uh, in collaboration with the local iwi. Uh, and also I just want to acknowledge that the research is also funded by Sustainable Seas. Um, so similar to Kitty, my research is located uh, in Ohiwa Harbour in the eastern Bay of Plenty of Aotearoa, New Zealand. And as she mentioned, it sits within the ancestral homelands of four iwi or hapu, um, one of them being my own, Ngāsiawa. Uh, and my research supports the wider Sustainable Seas National Science Challenge Afi Mai Afi Atu, uh, a kaitiakitanga-based approach to ecosystem-based management. Uh, one of the goals of Afi Mai Afi Atu is to assist in the recovery of um, the traditional mussel beds or cuckoo beds on the sea floor in Ohiwa Harbour. Um, however, the chronic infestation of the Pa Tangaroa or the 11 armed starfish, which you can see depicted in this image, which was actually taken in Ohiwa Harbour on a pippy bed. Um, and the cushion star, which is a smaller starfish species, is believed to be limiting mussel recovery efforts in Ohiwa. Uh, an iwi-led monitoring program uh, found an estimated 1.2 million of these 11-armed starfish in 2009, while simultaneously the cuckoo beds or the mussel population declined from 112 million to 16 million between 2007 and 2009, and these starfish were also observed predating directly on them. So through these monitoring regimes and observations, they believe that they attributed to their decline. Now this situation is not unique to Ohiwa Harbour. Overabundant starfish have been recorded to be hindering shellfish efforts in other locations of Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, as well as globally. Now, despite these propositions, there's actually been no attention given to develop a starfish management regime in the context of shellfish restoration. So, with this in mind, uh, my PhD focuses on co-developing a starfish management action plan with relevant Māori authority and endorsed by our co-management partners, the Ohiwa Harbour Implementation Forum, which Kitty mentioned before. This will be achieved by working collaboratively with our EU partners and drawing upon both Mātauranga Māori and marine science. So to do this we have this really great transdisciplinary team which include iwi representatives uh, collectively, collectively referred to as Te Ropu Kairangaho. They are our Mātauranga Māori advisors, practitioners and they also hold important profiles um, for their respective iwi, including Manager for Customary Fisheries and the Chair for Te Rurunga o Ngāsiawa. Then we also have my Science and Technical Advisory Group, essentially my supervisors. Um, they're all marine ecologists, two of whom whakapapa Māori, and we also have our Technical Officer who has over 15 years experience working in Ohiwa Harbour. Of course myself, and as I mentioned earlier, the Ohiwa Harbour Implementation Forum. So, to assist our collaboration and integration of Mātauranga Māori marine science in this research, I created the conceptual Kamua Kamuri co-developed framework that you can see behind me. Kamua Kamuri is a whakatauki or Māori proverb, which refers to looking to the past to inform the future. In the context of my research, it's about drawing upon Māori perspectives and philosophies of the past and contemporary tools and knowledge of today to inform management actions into the future. It takes for granted that Mātauranga Māori is not just a source of traditional ecological knowledge, but a process to acquire knowledge. 
It was also underpinned by Te Awe Kotoku's 1991 Kaupapa Māori principles. Um, so this figure you can see behind me is an illustration of the framework and was actually inspired by the development of our natural starfish traps, which you'll see later in the presentation. So the vertical threads, or the fenu, the brown strands, represent important stages of the research. And the two horizontal strands that are twined together, known as the aho, represent mātauranga Māori, the green strand, and marine science, the blue strand. The traditional weaving technique um, that I tried to illustrate, known as the fatu, um, shows the two worldviews coming together to strengthen and, and support um, the fenu or the different stages of the research. So what does it look like in practice? So here's this figure adapted from the earlier figure, the conceptual framework, demonstrating research informed by mātauranga Māori and marine science through mixed method approach. This included kaupapa Māori research methodologies, particip participatory design, applied mātauranga, quantitative marine field methods, and experimental study. Findings from each of the stages were then used to inform the next stage or to assist in the development of a starfish management action plan. So each of these timestamps you can see in this figure is the fenu or the different stages of the research. Prior to each stage, I'd also ensure to share the latest findings with our EE partners or Te Ropu Kairangaho. They provided feedback and then we develop the next stage collectively. This ensured that the research addressed their aspirations, issues, wants and needs for their harbour. So, through our engagement, um, Ewe wanted to know that if we were to remove starfish, what would that look like and is it feasible? So we produced an experimental study design which explores different removal methods, uh, including trapping, diver clearing, and a combination of trapping and diving together and compared daily catch rates to understand which method was most efficient. Prior to carrying out the study, we had to locate and map the experimental area to estimate background density of starfish. Um, the experimental area had to be homogeneous, large enough to carry out three replicates of each removal at scale and have evenly distributed starfish. This area was identified based on localised ecological knowledge, or mātauranga a iwi. So in images A and B in the black shaded area, or more image A, oh sorry, B, is where we conducted our removals. Um, and it actually sits within one of the traditional mussel beds, which you can only see the blue outline of, but that was where one of the mussel beds used to be. Um, for the trap removal, we actually conducted a pilot study first. So we compared catch rates of a semi-enclosed box trap, the sort of traps you can buy off the shelf, versus our own DIY open trap, which you can see in image A. We also trialled different soaking times, so how long to leave um, the trap in the water for. So we compared one, two and three day soaks. And we also trialled two different bait types, so bonito fish bait, and crushed mussel. We found that the open traps performed better, they had slightly higher catch rates and they can, could withstand the gnarly currents in the harbour. Um, and they had little to no bycatch, whereas the semi-enclosed trap, which you can see in image C, uh, had high catch rates, which goes against obviously mātauranga Māori perspectives and ecological perspectives as well. Catch per unit effort was similar for one and two day soaks, so re to reduce cost and effort, the traps were pulled every two days, and we also found that fish was slightly more effective. These findings informed the methodologies for the next stage of our field work. We also wanted to see if we could make natural starfish traps. Firstly, to reduce plastic pollution in the harbour, and to see if natural materials would attract or attain a greater number of starfish. This was based on previous um, observations in an earlier trial study uh, where natural starfish exclusion cages made from natural material actually retained greater starfish than ones made out of synthetic material. So we co-designed the natural starfish trap with Tohunga Raranga or Master Weaver Ruka Hurihia Ngari Mu Cameron 
you can see in image A, we're actually based down in Hawaii Bay. Um, and we developed these based on her Mātauranga Māori weaving principles. Through this process of making natural traps, we learnt about appropriate materials, where to source the materials, customs around harvesting and weaving techniques. We found that pirita, so supplejack, and harakeke, or New Zealand flax, were the best materials. And these materials are what our tipuna, or ancestors, have used for generations in the moana. Uh, in, image bay, uh, bay, in image B, you can actually see the completed version of the natural starfish trap. And in image C, shows several 11 armed starfish actually caught by the trap. So, after the pilot study, we conducted the experimental removal site. We had three replicates of each removal technique, and each site covered an area of around 1,200 metres square. The blue images are of the diver removal, the yellow images of just trapping, and the red images are the combined efforts of diver removal and trapping, and the white crosses just to depict our control sites. We had to ensure a 100 metre buffer between each removal plot, uh, and each time we went out, we recorded starfish numbers and sizes. We spent 18 days in the field attempting to fish down the starfish in each removal plot. So what did we find? Um, we started the, when we started the trial, we had just over 5,000 of the 11 armed starfish in an 8 hectare study site. After our 18 day removal, we cleared just over 20% of the population, or just over 1,000. <coughs> we also cleared surprisingly 10,000 of the smaller cushion stars. Uh, and if we break it down to the different removal techniques, the combined effort um, proved the most efficient, with the highest daily catch rate than diver removal or trapping alone for both species. Alternatively, diving was the second most efficient method for the 11 armed starfish, whereas for the cushion star, diving or trapping uh, were of similar. Based on these findings, we recommended the combined effort. Oh, okay, that's not what it's meant to look like. Okay, the, kind of ignore these graphs because they're a little bit, they don't look like what they look like on my page. <coughs> but anyway, after 18 days of intensive trapping, irrespective of plots were cleared by divers prior, we actually saw no significant decline in catch rates. Therefore, traps can maintain same catch per unit effort for an extended period of time. We also found that trapping alone removed over 130% of the original population within the trapping plots. It is believed that traps do, do induce migration of starfish into our trapping sites as starfish are attracted by bait plumes. So this should be a consideration when looking to select trapping as a potential removal method as it could encourage starfish from outside populations to mobilise into removal sites. Our recommend recommendation is that trapping is not a concern, however, for Ohiwa, given that the starfish outbreak is a localised issue. So what about the natural traps? Um, with regards to their performance, the mean daily catch rates for the 11 armed starfish were similar between the ones made out of synthetic material and natural materials. However, for the cushion stars, we actually saw a higher catch rate for the metal traps than the natural traps, about twice as much. There were some design faults with the natural traps that could have negatively impacted the catch rates, but these learnings can easily be rectified. Ultimately, the benefit of using natural traps is that it was more accessible, it encouraged participation through involvement in the design, and supported the inclusion of Māori practices, tikanga or customs, through the use of traditional materials and weaving. This is an important part of the research, uh, research study as Indigenous communities are continuously looking at ways to reassert Indigenous, indigenous management practices into marine spaces. And finally, the cushion stars. So this is actually the underside of the cushion star, and they're about this big. So during the starfish removal, some traps became inundated with newly recruited green lip mussels, about the size of three to four, five, three to five millimeters. Cushion stars were also observed in the field and subsequently in our holding tanks 
predating on the juvenile muscles, consuming up to 10 of these small muscles at one time. This was new information for us and for Ohiwa. Knowing that the cushion stars actively predate on juvenile muscles and are in vast numbers based on our catch results, we believe that they could be a potential bottleneck for muscle recruitment. So our recommendation was further investigation on the predation pressure of cushion stars um, for the management of Ohiwa. So what does this all mean? All of our qualitative and quantitative findings through literature, field experiments and expert knowledge assisted in the development of the Starfish Management Action Plan, or what I like to call the SMAP. The SMAP was aimed at streamlining decision making for managers. The SMAP was presented with various options to ensure it can be adaptive and applicable relative to resources, expertise and the current ecological state of Ohiwa. The latest draft of the SMAP was presented to Te Ropu Karangaho in February of 2023 and subsequently to the Ohiwa Harbour Implementation Forum and the Ohiwa Harbour Strategy Coordination Group. And on the 23rd of July 2023, it was unanimous, unanimously accepted by all members and is now part of the annual work plan for the Bay of Plenty Regional Council. I believe there are several mechanisms that helped in, in its acceptance. One, it followed our co-developed um, framework and kaupapa Māori methodologies. Myself and my team, or our team, commitment to the collaboration process is exemplified by the amount of engagements we had. Um, a total of 220 engagements in the form of hui and wānanga was carried out by our wider Afi Mai Afi Atu team, 27 of which was led by me or was directly related to my research. Secondly, the collaboration fostered participation, where local stakeholders could engage in planning and implementation process, providing a sense of ownership and responsi responsibility, thus enhancing community support. The SMAP also addressed Action Area 2 of the Ohiwa Harbour Strategy 2014. This meant that the research objectives aligned with the Ohiwa Harbour Implementation Forum's um, responsibility and commitment to the harbour. And lastly, it is both a practical and adaptable tool, grounded in empirical data. The SMAP was designed to be easy to follow, provided several options that could be tailored to available resources, funding, and other specific circumstances of the community. So, I hope that what I shared with you today highlighted how this research has transcended into environmental management actions that reflect both Mātauranga Māori and marine ecology based information through co-development with iwi. E hara taku toa i te toa takitahi, engari hi toa takitini. Success is not the work of an individual, but the work of many. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā tātou katoa. Sorry, that was a bit quick. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Megan? Yes. <laughs> so you were saying that there was a 100 meters buffer in between the different sites. Yeah. And you were actually finding that the more you were trapping, you were just getting more and more of them coming yeah. in. Yeah. How, uh, how, how fast can they move? How far can they go? We predicted, based, and we can only estimate with the larger starfish because we, we, we estimated their density. Um, I think around 20 metres a day. So the traps were, oh, a 20 metre square area was what the traps were clearing per day. That's somewhat what we estimated. Yeah. I wonder how far they can like smell your fish. And they're like, Let's I know, that. yeah. And it's also, I think you have to be mindful, um, like the prevailing currents. So if they're sort of downstream and you're trying to do removals, you might be attracting them coming up. Up to the necessarily a bad thing. It might not be a bad thing if you want to clear, yeah. you know, a majority of that population in that site. I also want to acknowledge that these starfish are also native to Ohiwa and they're also native to New Zealand. So it wasn't so much about eradicating them, mm -hmm. it was more so about reducing the number so that mussels could recover and recruit and grow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Um, 
Um, I'll repeat the question. So, do we have any ideas around what's potentially caused the imbalance between, or what's caused the outbreaks of the starfish? Um, not really. Um, so the initial question was trying to address why there are so many starfish, um, but having looked through literature, um, there is several different hypotheses. So people think that the increase in nutrients from land runoff could be attributing to these starfish outbreaks because larvae like to feed on phytoplankton. Um, it could be removal of predators, so particularly when they're juveniles, they're more vulnerable to predation. Um, disturbances offshore, so um, destructive fishing practices. Um, one, there's two things that they do. When you cause destructive bottom, um, you can create the swarming effect of starfish. And when they're closer together, they increase the fertilization rates. There's also a removal of their food. So under low food, they could be pressured into coming into other areas. So there's all these different theories behind it. We also don't have a lot of data on the starfish population. The, there was a survey done in 2009, and then the subsequent survey was when I did my start of my PhD in 2020. So there's a big gap, and we also it's hard to correlate what's been happening in the environment to what's been happening or looking at the starfish trends over time. Yeah, so. So no, to, the short answer is no, we have no idea. <laughs> yeah, so the, that's why we decided to jump into a management plan. And so in the meantime, whilst we're trying to figure that out, we can do something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, any other questions? Yeah, no? one more round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you.